Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the showdown between the Vampire Counts and Chaos Dwarves. It's going to be myself and the Counts with Vlad von Karstein facing off against the Kraken King, who's going to be coming in here with ye old Zaytan the Black, so not Astrogoth. Pretty fun stuff. Now, Zaytan does have some advantages, of course. He can fly on a big monster, and on top of that, he does have access to a snare, and snares are very, very good. So, for my build, the whole idea is just bring a bunch of trash units, throw them at the Chaos Dwarves, and use Vampiric Magic to try and wear them down like Winds of Death, and see if that can work, because in my experience, this matchup has been very, very tough for the Vampire Counts if you bring anything good. If you bring Elite Cavalry, if you bring Graveguard, uh, they're going to get shot by the Magma Cannons, by the Infernal Fire Glaives, and get Blasting Charged by the Infernal Fire and Sworn. So I think you just want to go super wide with like terrible units, and that's what we're doing. So we have Zombies, Skeleton Spears against Bull Central Renders, a couple of Corpse Carts. I actually think of all the Vampire Lords, Vlad von Karstein is the best here. The big Vampire Lords, in my experience, are a little bit easy for the Chaos Dwarves to bully. Like if you have a flying character, uh, Zaytan's going to be able to net them down, for example. Uh, you know, Astrogoth's going to be able to bully them in combat. They have the Fire Glaives. They have their own big monsters that do fire damage. But Chad von Karstein, the OG, he can get in there and do some work. Now, Vampire Counts have been nerfed a little bit in this patch, but honestly, I think they're warranted, and it's going to be a much more fun to play against them. Cryptors did lose a little bit of HP, but are still a very good unit. Uh, they lost magic damage on some of the Grave Guard, which is pertinent against Demon Factions, which had very little chances against the Vampire Counts before. So overall, very happy with the place the Vampire Counts are in. The games I played with them, it's been pretty fun. So in the forest here, we got more Skeleton Spears. This is a bit of an experiment. Black Coaches are good against Dwarves, so let's see how they do against Chaos Dwarves. And this is the last ambush. We have a couple of Crypt Ghouls. Now, the reason why I think you can get, get away with these uh, crazy little golems is because they have stock. So Magma Cannons aren't going to be able to shoot them. You can use them to tie down shooting, jump on Hobgoblins. They'll obviously lose against Chaos Dwarf Infantry, but they give you some utility to jump on back lines and also give you good capture weight because the build, this capture weight, not amazing. Now, for the Great Anticities Army here, He's coming in with very, very nasty stuff. He's got the Magma Cannon, which is excellent against Vampiric Infantry. Uh, Chaos Dwarf Warriors with great weapons. A triple Infernal Guard Fire Glaive, which I think is pretty rad. These guys, at Elite Infantry in general, are very good against the Vampire Counts if they can avoid being nuked by magic. That's really the big crux of this matchup. Now, Bull Central Renders with great weapons, a monster. They'll dominate pretty much all of my cavalry. Blood Knights can go fisticuffs with them. But Blood Knights are a bit of a liability, in my opinion, because the Fire Glaives can shoot them, Magma Cannons can blast them, so I prefer the Attrition playstyle. Now, in the back, we do have Double Necromancer stroking their Forbidden Rods in the bushes. You know, good time for all, and that is basically it. So, of course, we'll do a little bit of fast-forwarding here, because uh, these two armies are going to take a moment to posture up here as the Magma Cannons start shooting. But yeah, you know, Magma Cannons do a hell of a lot of damage, but who cares? All these units suck. And that's the best part about uh, Vampire Counts. And this is also very lore-accurate Vampire Counts, right? Like a Vampire Count Lord doing all the work while all the zombies and skeletons just kind of hang out. Now, Vlad actually gets a kill here, if I'm not mistaken. He's going to karate chop one of the bull centaurs. He does drag it down. So that is actually a pretty cost-effective trade. Granted, the magma cannon is still doing nice work against the spearmen, but you'll see I actually have more value, despite all the uh, flair that we are seeing from those magmas. Now, right here, we do get Zaytan the Black, and he's on the Lamasu. Lamasus are really good as mounts in a couple different matchups. I think they're really good against ogres. I think they're good against vampires. Uh, they do have super high melee defense, so Zaytan going to be rocking 50 to melee defense. It's really funny how he's literally carrying a shield, but he doesn't have block chance. I feel like that's a little bit strange. But even still, he does drag down the Corpse Guard. Corpse Guards are only 300 gold, so losing one of those isn't going to be too bad. And now on the side point, we do see the Infernal Guard Fire Glaive, so the die is cast. We're going to be moving out. We got Zombies, Skeletons, Corpse Guards, and Black Coaches coming up. Felbats moving in. Yep, going to take a little bit of a shot on the approach, but this is exactly what we need. The Felbats to tie down Ye old Infernal Guard Fire Glaives, which their anti-large isn't going to help here, and that allows my uh, Golems to get in there. So the Crypt Ghouls will be jumping on top of the Fire Glaives, whereas in the middle, Vlad von Karstein and the Undead pushing, trying to overwhelm these forces. And ladies and gentlemen, I see a very erect Winds of Death opportunity. These two units a little bit bunched up here. The Feasters in the Dusk going to be jumping on the Infernal Guard Fire Glaives, which should be a good fight. And now Winds of Death coming in, overcasted, baby. Here it comes. Let's watch and enjoy. There's a lot of damage against those Fire Glaives goes through. Kind of tickles my own units, but overall, that was very, very worth it. We do get the Black Coach Alpha striking in, and the uh, Devils of Swartzhofen going to move in, getting a fat rear charge. And there, just like that, you crumble those elite units, which is good. So a lot of this matchup is going to be tied to your Winds of Magic. I feel when the Vampires still have Winds of Magic, they're going to be capable of dealing with like the Chaos Dwarf Elites and handling the shooting and whatnot. But when the magic runs out is when things can get really, really crazy. 
this is a little bit of a sneaky play. We get the Dire Pack in here, and Chaos Swerves, they can react. They have the Hobo Goblin Riders. Uh, Bull Centaurs are very slow, though, so I'm like, let's get the Dire Pack and go Secret Agent. Anti-Large against Magma Cannon. That thing is 10 melee defense. Let's go for it and see what happens. Now, here we get a little bit of a surround. We actually trap many of the Bull Centaur units and the Devils, a bunch of Skeleton Spears, the Black Coach, able to get some nice damage against those bad boys while Vlad von Karstein just is an absolute menace here and pushes back the Infernal Guard. Looking at the rest of the fighting, it's a little bit of a stalemate. Basically just chaff units fighting good quality Chaos Dwarf units as the Dire Pack maneuvers in the backfield hunting down that Magma Cannon. And that would be a really nice pick. If we could take that down, that's going to relieve a lot of the pressure. But we are ahead in value, actually. And you can see the Magma Cannon itself here sitting at about 700 value. So it has done well. But now that we've dealt with the Fire Glaives, it's time to summon in Cryptors. Cryptors are going to be a good cleanup unit. There will be a couple coming out of the trees here in just a moment. The first batch coming out right there, if memory serves. And Vlad, you basically just want to have him stick on top of elite units. He has good armor piercing. And there's the Dire Pack. Pretty big stuff. And looking at the bank here of Anticity, he does not have enough for another Bull Centaur render quite yet. And in this matchup, like, there's not really any reason for the uh, Chaos Dwarfs to probably bring Hobgoblin Riders. I mean, maybe one or two just to deal with Hound units, but it's it's not that they're very good against much of the roster. So that allows things like the Dire Pack to really feast like the Heathen Kings of old here. Sitting on a double cap, we're up in points, but not too much. Now it gets really scary because Chaos Dwarfs can keep throwing these, you know, elite units at you. And if you don't have the Winds of Magic and you don't have Graveguard and Crypt Dwarfs, that can be very tough to deal with, right? So Black Coach gets in there, and the Black Coach uh, does a little bit of damage, but not as much as he would have liked. I was kind of surprised by that. And now we're going to be moving into Crypt Ghouls, as well as Zombies, and the Devils of Swords often moving forward. Really nice blasting charges there from the Blazing Beards of Asherik. The fact that they all do fire damage is also a little bit problematic. A lot of vampires are weak to fire, so you got to be careful. But there's nothing on the roster that's going to kill Vlad. Vlad is a raid boss of a fighter, and the same thing happens in the Chaos matchup. Like, Sigvald is very, very tough for the Chaos Dwarfs to kill. Now Devil's going to be moving across, Cryptors get a big charge, and Cryptors will absolutely crush the Chaos Dwarfs with Great Ovens. The thing is, they are regenerating units, so fire damage is relevant, but basic, you know, Chaos Dwarf infantry don't do fire damage. So these little golems here are going to be putting an unholy beat down, but Zaytan gets a really nice net up in the sky, so Zoltan he gets some nice work, and uh, the Devils are going to be locked down by his Sadistic Snare, and he's getting some good kills. I really like the Zaytan pick here. I think it's a, a cool change-up, just showing that... Astrogoth obviously is super overtuned and is going to be the more meta pick until he potentially gets fixed. Um, and again, for anybody who's like coming in from a perspective of, like, you know, I'm a campaign guy, I don't want, you know, it ruining my fun and campaign, you don't need to. Just make him cost more in multiplayer. It's not going to affect you guys at all. And uh, hey, it's a win-win for everybody, right? And I really think that's the approach for a lot of units, right? Like, I think you can just make things cost appropriate and uh, it can often get the job done, right? If, if you made Astrogoth cost 300 more, I think you would probably be in a good state. It would be more of an investment. And, uh, you know, as far as like the uh, Magma Cannons go, you can make them more price appropriate. Make them cost 1,500 gold or something, or 1,400, something like that, and, and not going to affect campaign experience, and everybody's happy. Now, Chaos Tour Four Years here, going to be getting hit by the uh, by the Crypt Horrors, as well as the Devils, and they are able to tear apart Chaos Dwarf Infantry. Chaos Dwarf, like, baseline troops, they're not quite as resilient as their Dwarven Cousins. They don't often have immune psychology on the same amount of things, and they don't have, I think, the same base leadership values. If you're going to be comparing Longbeards to, like, Chaos Dwarf Warriors with Great Opens, which cost about the same as Longbeards. So, you know, something to consider. Another unit of Fire Glaives getting taken down here, but the Blazing Beards of Asherik making progress. But Cryptor is putting a huge dent in them. And like I said, they did lose 1,000 HP, but they're still a really, really good unit. Cryptors were very overtuned before, and uh, they will be able to just crump these guys down. So the Blazing Beards getting hammered pretty hard, and we do have a couple Spearmen holding on, but the capture weight for the Chaos Dwarfs here is getting a little bit precarious. Looking at value, we're dead even, which... With healing being taken into account, I probably overall have more value on the battlefield. But like I said, a lot of this matchup is heavily, heavily tied to the old Winds of Magic. Vlad von Karstein doing a big Winds of Death right there. Nails two elite units. I didn't have the Winds for an overcast, so it wasn't quite as devastating. But even still, quite good there. Makes me think maybe Pit of Shades would be a better choice. But of course, Vlad doesn't have access to that. So maybe you would go Vlad and, I don't know. Yeah, Winds is good. It's definitely very, very strong here. Zombie summons are also nice. The two Necromancers, I did unsummon them, but they were able to stroke their Forbidden Rods for a long time. But I'm starting to lose the capture weight on this point. And that was pretty much my last Wind's Magic play. I'm not going to have too much more after that, sadly. So dealing with these elite units is going to be quite tough indeed. Cryptor is doing great, fighting Zaytan and uh, cu cutting down these Chaos Dwarves. We do have some Spearmen moving up and uh, more Skeletons heading up to the point. So you can see how the Magma Cannons, even though they're doing good, it's not quite as devastating, right? And then crazy value on it, probably a thousand, which, I mean, it's been shooting... That's the second one, and it was resummoned. So this thing's overall cum cumulative cost is going to be like over 2,000 gold, and uh, it hasn't gotten anywhere near that yet, right? So 
you can see how just avoiding elite units against them is is a band-aid until potentially they uh, cost a little bit more so doggos get the rear charge we rear charge these chaos war warriors who are being held in place by spears don't know if that's a good idea we'll see how it goes felbat's being summoned in vlad von karstein fighting off infernal iron sworn and vlad has been a raid boss this game he's currently sitting at 2700 value and he's got more to give he's got good armor piercing on his sword and uh, we'll be able to progressively wear down, you know, pretty good quality Chaos Dwarf units. As the Devils also show that they're good in this matchup. 1300 value on their first life out. And good, good, good armor piercing. Cryptors still great. Able to chew through these units. And uh, yeah, guys, honestly not looking bad. You know, a lot of folks I've been talking to in some of the early games, which uh, obviously people, uh, there's folks who do YouTube stuff and whatnot. And then there's also some people who have early access for the upcoming championship who are, you know, top eight players in the world, essentially. And we've been playing a lot of games and a lot, the big consensus was that vampire counts really, really were kind of getting crumped by the Chaos Dwarves. But it just goes to show that, you know, there are ways to adapt. And in this game, they're not doing bad. Win or lose, like, I'm very, very happy with the showing that the vampire counts have had here in this matchup. It's we It feels weird rooting for the vampire counts, like, because I've just hated playing against them for so long. But this patch has been... In my opinion, a big win. Um, you know, the nerfs to Hellstriders and Vampire Counts getting tuned down a little bit. Those were the two, like, super overtuned factions. Slanesh rocking an 80-plus percent win rate. Vampire Counts around 65%. I can see Slanesh with the nerfs they got to their Marauders and Hellstriders going down to, like, a healthy 55%. Vampire Counts probably around 60, 55. I still think they'll be a top-tier faction. But Chaos Dwarfs, I think, are a natural predator to the uh, Chaos, to the Vampire Count, so that could, like, bounce things out. I'm really excited for the meta. Nurgle, I think, is going to be much better. There's so much to look forward to. I'm, I'm very, very excited. So, right here, we do get Black Knights coming in. Black Knights are a little bit of a suspicious choice. I think against more Hobgoblin-centric builds, they could be better at clearing out, like, mass amounts of Chaos Dwarf capture weight. But, yeah, in retrospect, I would probably cut the Black Knights. I feel like with his Infernal Iron Swarm being spammed, they're just kind of dead weight and are a really, really easy target. Whereas... Uh, maybe some Graveguard Great Weapons in Deep Reserve to come in now once the Magma Cannons are shut offline or have Line of Sight issues could be very strong. So this objective flipping a little bit, but Zoltair, Zoltan, Zaytan the Black is uh, cutting through the Skeleton Spears. So he does also have a Demon Smith of Hashet, which is going to be his uh, Flames of Asgora. Oh, that's what he's been using all game. Yeah, he's been roasting my zombies and skeletons with that. This objective might flip though. So going to be trying to get that triple cap. We are up on points, but Winds of Magic is pretty much empty. So I don't have enough for any sort of big spells at this point. So this is where it's going to get a little bit scary as the elite Chaos Dwarf Infantry are coming back in. You know, we have some Infernal Iron Chads here. Going to be throwing Blasting Charges. There they go. Nuking through my Crypt Ghouls, which are one of my only good capture weight units. And Crypt Ghouls are going to do nothing against Infernal Iron Sworn. I do drop the Master of Beguilement on them. Winds of Death, that was my last one. So I did get a Winds of Death on the Infernal Guard Fire Glaives. Felbats are on them, which is great. You know, Felbats will die to them, obviously, but they're holding them at bay for some time. While the Black Knights are going to be uh, couching those lances and trying to get in on the Infernal Guard Fire Glaives. So this objective is holding it down right here. We do see the Chaos Dwarfs uh, holding that objective. So old uh, Zaytan the Black. And some bull central renders with great opens able to get the job done. But we have a lot more zombies and skeletons holding on to objective number one. Classic vampire counts just sending wave after wave of the undead to come do battle. But Crypt Ghouls really, really getting smashed. And Crypt Ghouls are, yeah, they're going to have a terrible time here. Infernal Iron Sworn are basically Iron Breakers with fire damage. And they are going to be a problem. Vlad Von Karstein, though, in the Corpse Carts. I did summon in two Corpse Carts. I just, you know, didn't have many choices uh, based on the units I brought. I also felt like the Black Coach was pretty terrible. And potentially something that if this game does go southward could be... Uh, uh, something you could really blame, right? So Black Knight's doing cycle charging. We do get over here and break some Chaos for Warriors, as well as the Blazing Beards of Basharic. We get a Shatter on them, so... No, not the worst thing in the world. They come over. We got about 300 value. Vlad going to be moving in to try and shut down the Fire Glaives here as we do maintain our capture weight. But this is going to be messy. We got two Bull Centaur Renders, I think. No, just one. And the Demon Sorcerer. Yeah, second one coming in. And, you know, this is... My combined value is like 400 gold right here, and we have like over 3,000, 4,000 gold coming to shut this down. So this is going to be tough. I do have the Dire Pack waiting on an ambush on the Bull Centaur, some Felbats coming in to try and tie things down. And now this objective is getting very, very scary as well as uh, old Vlad Von Karstein, man, doing great work. 3,400 value, holding it down. Black Knight's getting Last Samurai, but an okay charge, and they weren't able to brace because Vlad was in combat with them. So hopefully we can get the break on those guys and maintain some control over this objective. Infernal Iron Sworn still being absolute monsters. Dire Pack circling around. And you can see the Bull Centaurs and uh, Zaytan actually gets broken there. He got taken down by some haggard zombies. He was really, really low. And Felbats also swarmed him. I used the Felbats. But the Flames of Asgoro going down. Big damage from the Kraken King right there. Absolutely beautiful. As the Dire Pack's going to be swarming around the backside going for the uh, Bull Centaur Renders. But for some reason, I give a bad attack order. And he does get the charge right there. So... 
I don't know if it would have made a big difference, but the Bull Centaurs do get in. Dire Pack still concaves in with their anti-large attacks. Dire Pack will probably be a staple in this matchup. I, I think they're very good against uh, at sniping the Chaos Rope Artillery. Magma Cannon's back online, and it has gotten 1,400 value, so it hasn't quite paid for itself this game, but that's the whole point of the strategy. Don't give it anything to shoot, right? So Vlad and company do break the Infernal Guard Fireglaze. Vlad causes terror, which is also extremely pertinent in this matchup, and the Aura of Dark Grandeur gives him a minus leadership buff. I, I might have cut that. I'm not sure, but it probably is worth bringing. Chaos Dwarves don't have the best leadership outside of their elite unit. So the Devils come back in. Devils will be very good against Infernal Iron Sworn, and they get the rear charge. Big armor piercing damage coming in. Hundreds of HP just going off those units. And the Felbats and company trying to charp at the Bull Central Renders. And this objective is very, very contested here. As far as troops I have coming in, Zaytan the Black did escape. So we'll be summoning in some Felbats. Skeleton Spearman coming from reserves. But we're down in value now. Chaos Dwarves started to swing this game back. And I'm out of wins magic, right? Like, I can't deal with these elite units. Uh, so that really is a big, big thing. And something that, you know, I was kind of thinking is that... I did have the double Necromancer Forbidden Rod, which was keeping my Winds of Magic, but when they ran out of charges, I started to suffer in this game a little bit. So a good lesson is that instead of maybe summoning out Black Knights, I should have resummoned my two Necromancers, gotten those Forbidden Rods going, which would have given me maybe an extra Winds of Death, which could help me get these Elites off the point. So Chaos Dwarfs take that point. Back objective is going to be controlled by our boys. Magma Cannon pounding from downtown, but I'm really starting to feel behind in this game. And now the waves and waves of the inexorable Chaos Dwarves do come out as the Infernal Guard Fireglaves racking up some good value here, 1400. I think it's their second life, so I don't know if they paid for themselves, but the Bull Central Renders, uh, not going to be great at clearing out Skeleton Spears. Skeleton Spears are actually excellent against them, but my Vargais are not going to be liking the Bull Central Render. So I'm trying to move somewhere and steal his back objective, so Skeleton Spears moving for the point here. Very, very close match. Looking at the score here, I'm at 1187, he's at 1048, but he would win on two here. Skeleton Spears just in droves, moving up. The Infernal Ironsworn, though, unfortunately, are very good against them. And Vlad is probably closing in on 4,000 value. Yeah, 3.6. Still wearing down those units. And the Devil's going to move in. Spears intercepting the old Bull Centaurs. And we get some good damage. Are we going to be able to get the Terror out? They're not immune to psychology, so they could get Terror routed off by Vlad, as well as the Devils, who also cause Terror. But now we're going to see the Bull Centaur renders maneuvering over to try and shut them down, which is going to be very, very precarious. But a little bit of theft on this back point. We have the Demon Sorcerer, Demon Sorcerer here fighting some zombies. It's a very little capture weight against very little capture weight. We call in the Dire Wolves to go for the capture on the back. So we're going to be going for a Ninja because this is such a close game. And uh, he does have the two cap on me. So I need to get an objective very quickly here. Bull Centaur renders tied down by Felbat Skeleton Spears moving in. But those damn Infernal Iron Swarm, man, they're a pain. And we do get the Devils charging in against the Bull Centaurs who are being worn down by the Haggard Spears and Felbats and Vlad. More elite troops coming in, and you know, Chaos Dwarf Warriors are even a pretty good tier unit. They're basically Longbeards with great weapons, with slightly less performance, uh, but they still, yeah, they're still very impactful in combat. So, more Skeleton Spears moving up. Doggo's coming to try and take down the Demon Smith Sorcerer. We do try and ninja this point, but basically everything here is on Death's Better Crumbling. Magma Cannon able to crumble off those last couple units here. Vlad von Karstein fighting tooth and nail on this point, doing the best he possibly can as Skeleton Spearmen do move up towards objective number three. But ladies and gentlemen, I think it's going to be a little bit too hard to get this back. Reinforcements coming in. We have Crypt Ghouls and uh, the Demon Smith Sorcerer is certainly taking some damage from the Dire Wolves that are uh, kind of swarming him right there. But I don't think we're going to have the stopping power to get this back. There's two or three elite Chaos Dwarf units moving in here. You can see Infernal Fire Glaives and uh, we're simply not going to have the, the capture weight. As I'm about to be passed in score, extremely close game, guys. Extremely close. Dire Pack actually goes for a ninja attempt. But the Demon Smith Sorcerer, they're able to kind of tank my zombies out, which is obviously makes sense. Gripgul's moving on for a little bit of capture weight. We go for the ninja, but he did have some blazing beards nearby, and uh, he is going to be able to get this. So that is going to be GG as my old Dire Pack does get nuked off the point. And what a great match. I felt like that match was certainly winnable. Um, I think we needed to... Uh, not there was some, we saw the glaring weaknesses the black coach was trash get rid of that thing against chaos orbs they have too much mass they have too much shooting they're going to punish it right so um you know the dwarves have shooting but they don't have the mass to stop a black coach but with the uh bull central renders it's too much of a liability so i think this build is very viable against them you cut the black coach you cut the um, black knights and then you cut the blood knights too and i needed more swarming more zombies more skeletons maxed out uh, mix in a couple Graveguard Great Opens and also max out Crypt Horrors. I would probably go max Crypt Horrors. And boom, I think you have a build that can beat the Chaos Dwarves. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. Just want to show you guys there is hope. Even if it seemed like it was a cursed matchup for Vampire Counts, I certainly think they can win it. And uh, I, I do like Vlad. Vlad is an absolute monster. He got 4,000 value that game. Uh, Zaytan, looking at his value, we do see 1,400. Bull Centaur Renders did good. Fire Glaives were a problem. Um, despite getting wins a couple times, it were an issue. Uh, the Magma Cannon ended up paying for itself. And yeah, they're just super strong. They're absurd. So no surprises there. Fernal Iron Swarm, very, very good. 
just like you know what dwarves iron breakers do usually have a similar performance maybe not quite as much damage the fire damage is really pertinent because against cryptors it allows them to wear them down very very quickly with an additional 22 percent damage all right guys see you on the other side that's going to be it for today and uh, hopefully you enjoyed that one cheers <laughs>